Today, I am honored to be here with Julian Joseph. She works at the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. She's been tapped for many roles while she's been there, and she's also an alumni of MBA. Welcome, Julian. Thank you so much, Marsha. I'm so happy to be here with you today. We were talking before um, the camera started rolling about your career at HUD. So can you tell me a little bit about the positions you've held there and what brought you to the the decision to go work in the government. Absolutely. Well, thank you again. Thank you so much for the time, Marsha. I'm so happy to be here with you and the Empower family. Um, my journey with HUD actually started while I was working here, uh, working on the residential policy and MBA's shop. And um, working on student loan debt calculation was actually what I believe got the attention of the Biden-Harris administration. Um, we were, of course, in the thralls of the pandemic, uh, but I think a lot of the experience that I had here um, helped to make them feel comfortable with the fact that they thought that I would be able to serve well uh, for the uh, agency as well as for FHA. Uh, so I was tapped to be the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Single Family Housing in mm -hmm. FHA, um, where we did amazing work. Um, we were able to, uh, again, incorporate the uh, recalculation of student loan debt, which was a huge passion for me. And I just want to thank Bob for supporting me, for being able to work on that policy while I was here at MBA. And also just to be able to help more than two million people keep their homes during the course of the pandemic. Um, you know, of course, working with Commissioner Gordon when she was confirmed in 22, um, we were so fortunate to be able to have a staff that was knowledgeable, experienced, um, and able to just really take on the challenge head on uh, to be able to address those needs. Um, so we were really, really pleased with the fact that we were able to prevent another 2008 housing crisis from happening. So to be able to save 2 million homes you know, for these families you know, was just a huge accomplishment. Um, and then after that, um, Madam Secretary Fudge, uh, at the time who's recently retired, March of this year, um, asked me to be her senior advisor for home ownership. And then I worked in concert uh, with the team in FHA to work on the mortgage insurance premium cut, which, of course, MBA was a huge partner with us in helping to determine those impacts and how to right size it. So we really appreciate all the feedback from MBA there. And then after that, uh, <laughs> Madam, Se uh, Madam Secretary asked me to be her chief of staff uh, for her final year um, before she went into retirement, which, of course, was an honor of a lifetime to serve her. Um, and now I'm happy to say that I'm serving as the senior counselor and chief advisor to the acting secretary, Adrian Todman, uh, who is now at the helm and leading the agency today. So you must have the special sauce because <laughs> I hear you've been tapped and tapped and tapped. What do you think it is that makes you stand out amongst all of those other employees at HUD? Mm, well, I will just say that a lot of my experience has been a culmination of all of the wonderful people that I've worked with during the course of my career. Um, I would have to say that the pivotal part, pivotal, pivotal part in my career was being a senior housing counselor at the Neighborhood Housing Services of Baltimore right after the housing crisis in 2010, where boots literally- Boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. I mean, it was ground zero after the housing crisis where I literally saw families at their worst, where husbands and wives were just, mothers and fathers were trying to figure out, how do I keep this roof over my children's heads? And to literally know that some people gave up, ultimately, just because their homes weren't able to be saved. So being able to have that one-on-one -on -one engagement I said to myself in that role that if I ever had the opportunity to shape policy on a greater scale, not knowing where my trajectory would lead me, but I would ensure that any piece of policy that I would put my name to, I would ensure that no one would ever feel that level of distress and despair. And I've just been fortunate that that has been my North Star that's guided every piece of policy. I think I maybe did about 28 or 29 pieces of policy as the sitting Deputy Assistant Secretary in FHA. But the first day that I went into my office, I wrote on my dry erase board, every decision you make in this office will impact generations. And that reminded me that these are not just spreadsheets, these are not just reports, these are not just deliverables, that these are people. And that has always guided me and I feel that that level of empathy goes a long way. Um, you know, people who know me know that I can cry at the drop of a hat, <laughs> but I feel that that is a superpower of mine 
because it's important, especially in the roles that I've been able to hold under this administration, that people know that we will cry for them. Yes. They need to know that we care that much. And I just feel that, um, that that's one of the things that I feel has been an asset uh, in order to serve uh, the, the communities that are leaning on us to make their lives better. Well, it's inspirational that you not only saw the bigger picture, but wanted to contribute in a way where you didn't um, make it about a job. Absolutely. You made it a mission and a passion. And I applaud you for that. And so many families in the communities we serve are, I'm sure, grateful for the work that you've done. Can you tell me about any pitfalls that you've had as you've navigated your career and how you overcame them? Mm -hmm. I would have to say I was a loan originator during when the housing crisis began, a young loan officer. And you know, I, I had a very strong gallop out of the gate uh, after I graduated from the University of Virginia, go Wahoos. <laughs> um, but you know, shortly thereafter, the markets completely froze. And you know, being young and just trying to figure out what's next for me, to then have you know something of that magnitude happen to our e economy took the wind out of my sails. Um, but there was one thing that I realized is that housing and housing finance was a passion for me. It was my thing, um, which was very interesting because I majored in English and I hated math my entire <laughs> life. How did I end up in housing finance? No one will, not, will ever know. Um, but with that being said, I think that even though the markets froze and origination just halted for almost the entire country, I still wanted to keep my finger on the pulse of housing. And that is why after I originated, I decided to go to the Neighborhood Housing Services of Baltimore. So that way I knew that the market would come back and I didn't want to be so far away from it that I couldn't come home to, to what my passion was. So instead of just walking away and doing something that wasn't even adjacent to housing finance, I decided to go the path of working at the nonprofit in order to help people um, who still wanted to buy homes, but also to help those by being a foreclosure counselor to help them save their homes as well. I think you're a great example of sometimes our career path isn't straight. It has twists and turns in it, and you never know how the current job you're in is going to prepare you well for another challenge or perhaps another opportunity that comes absolutely, your way. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, they say if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. And I think that he has probably his stomach is probably sore from you're laughing at so me. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. One final question for sure. you. You've been in the industry for a while. What advice do you have for young women who are in our industry and perhaps challenged or struggling with how do they make their next move or what factors do they need to take into consideration if they're considering making a move? That's a great question, Marsha. I would say, if I had to tell my younger self, mm -hmm. um, understand that only you have a gift that the world needs for you to give. You are endowed and bestowed with a set of skills and personality and warmth and love and knowledge and experience and charisma that is perfectly packaged for someone to receive and only you can deliver that thing. And couple that with your why and your passion and understanding that representation matters. If I haven't learned anything else through this journey is the fact that being a woman is one of the most wonderful things that you could ever be. And the other thing that I realized, particularly being a woman of color, is understanding that representation matters. Um, one of the things that I experienced in the different roles that I've had at HUD is just the fact that they said, you know, for a lot of the communities that we serve, that are underserved, they never knew that there were women, women of color who were in these positions in order to make change that would impact them directly. So I would say lean into those things that people tell you would be weaknesses because to be able to show up as your authentic self and to be able to give what it is that you're meant to pour into the communities or the clients or whoever you decide um, is going to be your uh, patron, do that because even if you don't understand what it's about today, it will absolutely reveal itself to you tomorrow. Very wise words. <laughs> I always say, nobody can do you. Nobody can do you but Just you. Just you. Absolutely. And on that, thank you so much you. for being here absolutely. and for such great words of advice for our community. Okay. Thank you so much for having me, Marcia.